You guys remember what it's like to be afraid? Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to remember very hard. <laughs> I was scared yesterday. Um, but when you, when you were a kid, everything was scary, wasn't it? I don't know how many of you guys grew up in the, I grew up in, in, in small towns where we used to have these big old houses. And there was always one place you never wanted to go as a kid, and that was the basement. Because <laughs> it was creepy. And the basements never had, those old basements, they never had light switches by the top of the stairs. They always had those old, like, swinging switches at the bottom where you, you know. And so the boogeyman was going to get you all the way down the stairs. <laughs> And it was always creepy to walk down them steps and just kind of go, oh, it's dark and it's scary. Why does my mom need peaches right now? I do not like this. I'm going to die. Something's going to reach under these steps and grab my foot. Pull me to the grave. I mean, I was just terrified that I'd get down there right away and turn on the light. And then I'd leave it on. And sometimes my mom would get mad at me because I'd never shut the light off. You know? I'm going to carry those peaches all the way upstairs with the lights on. We get scared a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm somebody who has dealt with a lot of fear. And uh, I think because, because the fact that I had a dad who was kind of afraid sometimes. My dad's biggest fear was tornadoes. He was scared to death of tornadoes. And every time it would storm, you would like, get to the basement. And we'd all sit down in the basement, kind of like, man, it's kind of boring. <laughs> I don't hear the tornado yet. You know, when we were kids, we would pray for tornadoes to come because it was so boring spending all that time in the basement. Well, maybe they'll rip the roof off and we can get out of here. But, but dad, dad had that, that, that fear of tornadoes. And, and I remember when I was a, a kid and I was growing up, I always wanted to kind of do things on my own, and, and I got was sheltered a little bit, and, and sometimes not allowed to, but one, one year he, he let me go on a camping trip with two of my friends, of course he drove us to the camping trip, but uh, we, we went out and set up a tent, and we got out there, and it was awesome, and, and we were cutting wood, making fires, and, and it started to get dark. We were making fires, you know, but we were spinning the full fires all over. No, we made a fire, okay. And, and it started to get dark, and so we, we all get into the tent, and it's, it's strangely, the woods are full of weird noises at night. And here's three junior high boys, you know, we're all out on our own. And we're like, did you hear that? I did. That sounded like a woman screaming. <laughs> There's a lot of forest animals that sound like women screaming for some reason. You know? And I'm sure it wasn't. It was probably just a Sasquatch or something. <laughs> but we, we were sitting there just like terrified. And then all of a sudden we heard, oh! We were like, oh, oh, we're going to die. It's like, hey! It's like it's getting closer to us. We didn't know we were afraid to open the tent. We were all we were like, finally, hey, are you guys in there? And it was dad. <laughs> we were never so happy to see him, you know, like, hey! And he was staying over at a, a friend's house. We ran a dairy farm, and he had brought us some fresh milk. And it was probably about 11 o'clock at night, and we were all like, oh, this is wonderful. And he says, I'm just coming to check on you. I'll be gone soon. Oh, you don't have to leave. <laughs> you can stay. You see, a lot of times, I think we think we're stronger than we are. But we're only about as strong as our fears. Fear can, can cause us to pause and can cause us to, to stop doing what we're doing. Fear can stop us in our tracks. Fear can, can help us to, to cease accomplishing something. Fear can rob us of our dreams, it can rob us of our goals, it can steal our direction. Fear can cost us the purpose of our lives, if we allow it to. Fear can grip us so much that we'll never go downstairs for those peaches. We'll never have peaches and cream. You know, we won't, we won't go out camping with our friends because we're terrified. 
And so a lot of times fear grips us. And this is, you know, we're, we're looking today at a story where the disciples were gripped by fear. They were panicking. They were afraid. And I want to tell you something. I think this, a lot of times we see these, these shows where the boat's rocking a little bit and there's a little bit of rain and the disciples are like, Jesus, help us. These guys were fishermen, okay? The guys were with Jesus. They were used to a little bit of rain and a little bit of wind. As a matter of fact, they were used to storms. So I'm thinking when the fishermen get afraid, we got a real situation. So number one, one day when Jesus was out with the disciples, a great storm descended on the boat. Mark 4, 35-41 says, As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. The paparazzi. <laughs> you never get rid of the crowd. But Jesus was like, let's go to the other side. So his disciples took him in a boat. So they had a little fleet out there. So Jesus took the boat and started out. They left the crowd behind, the other boats followed. Soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat. So the waves were higher than the boat itself. And the water's coming in. The guys are probably in there with buckets, trying to put it back out. And it began to fill with water. The boat began to fill up. Do you know what happens when boats fill up with water? They sink. Yes. So here's the disciples panicking, and they're trying the best that they can do to. They're probably some of them are using their hands, some of them are maybe scooping with other materials and getting all this water out. And they're going, we're, "This is horrible. This wind is. This is horrible. We're, we're going to die. This is awful. This is terrible." They begin to panic. They begin to become afraid. They begin to, when men become afraid, there is real fear. Because usually women are around and we're pretending like we're not afraid. There's no women on this boat. Just a bunch of guys panicking. So what does Jesus do? This is verse 37. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. What's he doing? He's sleeping. screaming and shouting and trying to bail the water out of the boat. And Jesus is sleeping very comfortably, relaxed. And when people can relax in a tense situation, we usually have the same reaction that the disciples had with Jesus. What is wrong with you? Why aren't you freaking out? Please join me in freaking out. So the disciples shouted, woke him up saying, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Then Jesus woke up. And he wasn't like, hand me a bucket. He woke up. He rebuked the wind and said to the water, Silence, be still. Or hush, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he looked at the disciples, and he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Then the disciples were absolutely terrified. I mean, they were afraid before. But now they're terrified because they're like, Jesus, they were waking him up to try to help they weren't waking him up to calm the storm. They were waking him up to bail water, man! All hands on deck! And he just woke up and said, Hush, be still. And all of a sudden, phew. And they're like, Okay, that's freakier than the storm. Yeah. He has that kind of control. Because they were sitting the cycles on that boat. 
They hadn't come to the realization yet that they were with God. They hadn't realized how powerful he was. They hadn't realized that the winds and the sea obey him. See, when you're God, you're not worried about the storm. When you're God, you're not worried about that because that's just, you know, hey. He knew exactly what was going to happen before it happened. But sometimes I think we get freaked out in our lives because we go through storms. And uh, we're like, God, this is unnatural. Look at what's happening in my life. God, do you even care? God, are you awake? Do you see what's happening to me? Do you see what's happening to my family? Do you see how ravaged we are? And do you see how the enemy is coming in and attacking us? And it seems like you're doing nothing. Wake up! This isn't right. And the thing that we don't understand is this. There is no place in the New Testament where you'll ever read this sentence. Jesus freaked out. <laughs> it's not there. God does not freak out. God's not, oh my goodness, I don't know what we're going to do. And if he did, would you want to serve a God like that? Would you be like, God, look at what's happening. I know. <laughs> what can I do? You're God. I know. God that's in control. And when you're in control of something, you're not afraid of it. He controls the weather. He was sleeping, and he knew perfectly well they were going to be all right. When God's in your boat, you're going to float. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to go, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. How are we going to get through this? Dude, God is on your boat. He ain't going to let nothing happen to you. You might be scared, you might be freaking out, but he's there. So verse 41, to conclude this, this, this portion of scripture, the disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They ask each other. <laughs> Even the wind and the wave obey him. Well, I'll tell you, he's not just a man, man. And that's the thing. Everybody, everybody seems to come to God and they seem to think that when things start going bad for them, or when things start getting hard for them, or when things start getting difficult for them, that he is somehow left. It's like Elvis has left the building. God's not there no more. I was doing really good with God and everything just fell apart. I don't know where he went. He didn't go anywhere. God said, I will never leave nor forsake you. Did he not? So if that's the truth, God is with you. And sometimes we look at the storms and we get so scared about what's going on in our lives we think, I'm never going to get through this. But if God's with you, you can get through anything. I feel sorry for the people who decide to jump out of the boat before they decide to put their trust in God. Now, I believe, I believe a couple things about this story. One, one thing I want to say is I think that some, in, in some manner God allowed this storm to happen because I believe it was a part of a learning experience for the disciples. But they needed to know how to trust God. But they needed to know that when Jesus is in the boat, everything's going to be okay. As a matter of fact, I think at the next storm, they probably didn't freak out so much. They probably said, <coughs> let him sleep. I think we'll be alright. You see, when we learn how to trust God, when we learn how to love God, when we learn who He is and what He means to us, and, and learn that just the fact that His very presence is in our lives, it gives us this great appreciation that overcomes some of the paranoia and some of the fear that we face as human beings. So number two, 
In our lives, and this is inevitable, in our lives, we're going to face storms, and the hardest challenge is going to be trusting God. In our lives, we're going to face storms, and the hardest challenge is going to be trusting God. Everything about this world is the opposite of trusting God. Everything. We trust job security. We trust health insurance. We trust our liability. We trust, we trust our friends. Sometimes we trust our enemies. We trust in a lot of things. But a lot of times when bad things begin to happen, when the storms begin to push us, the first thing we run to is those things that we put our trust in that really can't help us. And money can't help you. It can make you pretty happy, man. They say money can't buy happiness, but it sure can rent it for a while. Um, <laughs> but, but inevitably, money doesn't mean anything. To be the richest person in the world, you know, we could have a total economic collapse, and all of a sudden, you just got a bunch of paper, or you got a bunch of certificates in a bank, don't mean anything. There's a lot of, a lot of people that put their, their hope in their job, you know, they, man, I'm going to do this, and I got this, and I got this. Sometimes they even start making big, bad decisions that bring the storms on themselves. They start financing things they can't afford because they got this wonderful job. And that could be gone in a heartbeat. And then you're in a self-made storm of, and I should have waited a while. See, a lot of times we put our trust in the wrong things. And then when the bad things happen, when the storms come, the first thing we do is we freak out. Well, the first thing we should do is we should say, hey, God is with us. Let's have a chat with him. Let's talk to him. And I imagine there was probably a while before those guys woke Jesus up. That they were like, man, this is bad, this is horrible. We should please to him. Okay, come on, come on, let's get the we should go wake him up. I mean they were sitting there wondering what should they do? There's a lot of times when, when we panic, we don't go to God, we don't. You know, the first thing that happens when you when you hit a storm, the first thing that needs to happen is you need to go to God. Go to God. If you go to God, it might avoid you going to someplace else that's going to cause a bigger storm in your life. Turn it over to God. Now, sometimes when you're in the storm, you don't really feel like turning it over to God. How many want to be a disciple of Christ? All right, listen to this. When you're a disciple, you don't always do what you feel like doing. You do what God's word directs you to do. Whether you feel like it or not. See, one of the big problems we have is a lot of times people get mad at God when the storms come in their lives. They say, Lord, this is unfair. I don't understand this. Why did you do this to me? Or some say, why did you allow this to happen to me? Some people get so mad at God that they don't feel like asking for his help. They don't feel like turning to him. They don't feel like going to the Father. God, why is my life this way? Why did you straddle me with this? Why did you allow this to come into my life? Why did you let that happen to this person? And they start to get that anger inside of them, and it keeps them at bay. You know, Job was a man who was tested and tried. Job had to deal with his own pride and arrogance. But one of the things Job never would do is he would never get mad at God and curse him. Job 13, 13 through 15 says, be silent now, and he's talking to his little companions who are not doing him much well. Be silent now, leave me alone, let me speak, I will face the consequences. Yes, I will take my life in my hands and say what I really think. God might kill me, but I have no other hope. I'm going to argue my case with him. 
Now, in the King James, it says it this way. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Sometimes, as Christians, we, we, get this, we get this attitude of anything bad comes from the devil, anything that's uncomfortable that we don't like, and anything that's good, ice cream, puppies, etc., they all come from God. So, so broccoli, devil, <laughs> chocolate cake, God, um, which is ridiculous. Some churches, a lot of the, the faith churches, like, man, sickness, anything comes into you, any bad thing comes on you, that's just the devil, and you just rebuke him. Here's the thing we don't always realize. The devil doesn't get to do anything without God's permission. The devil went before God, before Job went through his tests and his trials. And God said, go ahead, make his day. God gave him permission. You know, before Jesus denied Christ, the devil did the same thing with Peter. <coughs> or, before Jesus. Before Peter denied Christ. Man, that was heresy. <laughs> before Peter yeah. That's the kind of soundbite they take. Apart. Look at what Troy Light said last week. <laughs> he worships the devil. No, I don't. <laughs> All my neighborhood cats are still intact. <laughs> before, before Peter denied Christ, Jesus came up to him and said, Satan has desired to sift you as we. Basically, the devil had to come and ask God permission before he could try to tear apart Peter. And so, so a lot of these things like, it's just the devil, it's just the devil. Well, the devil gets permission from God. Because a lot of these things are making us stronger. A lot of the storms we go through are teaching us how to trust in God. And, and we don't always understand it when we're walking through it, man. I, I tell you what, you don't always understand it when you're walking through it. But the one thing that you can't do is you can't let go of God. Job says, even though he slay me, Yet I'm going to trust him. Even though bad things are happening to me. Even though my children have died. And even though my livestock is gone. I'm going to trust in God. And I'm not going to let that trust be taken away. And so, um, one of the things uh, that we need to do is we need to put our trust in God. No matter what's going on. As you can see, it's easy to become distracted, isn't it? It doesn't take much to be distracted. It's a pinch. Oh! Jesus, we're not going to let that distract us from what God wants to do. So, so if you guys uh, want to minister to him, that's fine. But let's go to number three. Our fear is a product of not yet realizing how great God's love is for us. Marie, you gotta get, I want you to let this sink in. Our fear is a product of not yet realizing how great God's love is for us. When you know somebody loves you, you know that that person is not going to deliberately do anything to hurt you. My wife loves me. And you know what? She's been feeding me for over 20 years. And she hasn't poisoned me yet. It's amazing. What that woman can do with just a box of crackers and a couple cans of Alpo. God is not going to hurt you. Hurt may come into your life, and that may, that may be part of the storm, but you don't realize how much he loves you. And one of the problems, one of the reasons we have fears and we have anxieties, and one of the reasons that we don't make it sometimes is because we don't realize how much God loves us. 
We don't realize how much he cares for us. We don't realize how much he completely wants to take care of us and wants to help us. When the storms come, we always trust him. I want us to look at First John chapter four, verses fifteen through eighteen. First John four fifteen through eighteen says. All who confess that Jesus is the Son of God have God living in them, and they live in God. We know how much God loves us, and we put our trust in His love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. Isn't that awesome? Trusting God's love, living in God's love, letting God's love live in you. And as we live in God... Our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. You hear that? As you live in God, as you become a disciple of Christ, as you follow him, here's the thing that begins to happen. When people first come into a church, they don't like hearing certain things. I mean, it's awful. It's like going to the dentist after not going to the dentist for 20 years and getting a consultation. And he's like, you've got to come here, 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 here. Oh, they all got to come out. I'm sorry. And, and, and uh, you know, you get scared. You're like, my face is rotten. But then you go back and he does a little bit of work. They never do it all at the same time because well, none of us can afford it. But... Uh, he does a little work. Then he does a little more work. Then he does a little more work. And eventually, your mouth is restored to what it should be. And your cavities are capped or gone. And all of a sudden, you're like, I'm going to the dentist for my checkup today. And you're excited about it. You're not afraid of it. You're, you're happy because of the fact that you know you're going to get a good checkup. Why? Because you've taken care of all those problems. You've allowed him to do the work he needs to do in you. When people come to church and they're afraid of certain things, they're afraid of letting God do the work he wants to do. And if they would just allow that, if they would allow him to work in their lives, if they would allow him to do what he needs to do, pretty soon you'd have no more fear. Some people are like, I don't like going to church. I call it to feel like it. When you do that, it's not church's fault. It's not God's word's fault. There's obviously something in your life that doesn't line up with God's word. But the closer you get to Him, the more you're going to realize that you're enjoying more things because of the fact that you're not worried. You're not worried about God. See, here's the thing. If I was really, really angry at you, because you had some things that you've done to me. And kind of, you know, I know about them, and I know what you've been doing, and I'm really angry. You might start to fear me. And if you start to fear me, what you're going to do is you're going to avoid We don't like confrontation. We don't like harsh words. We don't like... And if you think that I'm going to confront you about something, you're going to be like, I don't want to see him anymore. And if you do that, then basically what's going to happen is you're going to sever your eyes. Now, I might not even want to confront you. I might not even be as mad as you think I am. But you don't know that because you never come to me about it. Here's the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is love and forgiveness. If you've got issues with God, come to Him. And you know what He's going to do to you? He's not going to hit you over the head with a 2 by He's going to forgive you. And he's going to love you. And so our fear is, is just this product of not realizing how much God loves us. Because if you could all have a revelation of how much God loves us, how enduring and how merciful he is, it would blow your mind. And so listen to this verse. This is the last verse, verse 18. Such love has no fear. Because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not 
fully experienced his perfect love. There's people who are afraid of the punishment of God and they don't understand his love. And sometimes we put our daddies in God's place. What kind of daddy did you have? If you had a daddy, I hope you had a daddy that was good. But could dad get mad sometimes? Could dad fly off the handle sometimes? Could dad act irrationally sometimes? Sometimes, as kids, we got in trouble on the wrong day. That's the truth. There's days when daddy's happy and there's days when daddy's not happy. And moms always wait until your dad gets home. I hate it when my dad came home on his days. Because my dad, he was the enforcer of justice. And so I'm just like, Jew Jesus, how dad do that? He's really good day. He's really, really happy. Because dad had a really good day. He's really happy. He's like, hey, you know what? Your mom's upset with you, so I need to talk to you about this. But just don't let it happen again, okay? And that was dad's good day. Dad was having a bad day. It was like, bend over. I was like, what? Bend over. Oh, no. And his belt would start coming off. And I'd show you what that's like, but my pants would fall down. And it takes me about 45 minutes to get the belt off on me. So it's taller than I am standing up, trust me. That's why sometimes when I can't see things, I just lay on my belly and I can look right over it. But my dad had that belt. He's taking it off. You know how they snap it? it um, what, what he would do is he would snap that. And, I'd be like, oh. and then he'd, he'd say, if you're a good boy, I'll only give you three liquors. Like, I don't know why they call it liquors. You never lick me or anything else. But I, I, I bend over and And then I'm like, And then you only see the stupidest thing I remember. Be happy, buddy. So you don't hurt your if you don't quit crying, sure. I'm going to give you another thing. Why would you force a kid to cry and then tell him to quit? See, here's the problem. Our earthly fathers were irrational sometimes. And their love depended on their day. And so there's times in, in, in my life when I look at God and I'm scared of Him. Because I think He's going to react like my dad did. I think He's going to be mad at me. And when I start thinking that, you know what I'm doing? I'm doubting His goodness. Those disciples that were on that boat were doubting the goodness of Christ. That's why he said, why were you afraid? If you knew who I am, if you knew who I was, if you knew me, you'd have nothing to worry about. So, I'm going to close with asking you this question. I'm going to ask if Fatih will come to the keyboard. The question is this. If you're facing fears, if there's something that's scaring you today, why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? Don't you know that God is in your boat? Here's the good news. The good news is this, that Jesus Christ came to this earth to reveal who God was. And his message wasn't, man, I'm really disappointed in you guys. His message wasn't, I'm mad at you and you're all going to die. His message was, I love you all so much, I will die in your place. Because my love is bigger than your sin. My love is bigger than your problems. My love is bigger than your storm. So quit being afraid of me and come to me. And I believe today God is calling us. I'm going to tell you the truth, folks. 
if God wasn't speaking to our hearts today, the devil wouldn't be working so hard to distract us. There's somebody, somebody's here who need to stand up and say, God, I don't want to fear you to the point that it keeps me away from you, but I want to respect and love you to the point where I can fully feel your love in my life. I can feel that acceptance. I can feel that mercy. I can feel that, that enduring grace that calls me to you and that perfect love that casts out all fear. If that's you this morning, I just want you to stand to your feet and come down to this altar right now. Just come and stand down here. If you need God's love, if you've been walking through a storm, if you've been going through something and you just need His love today and you need to just say, God, please, I need your assurance of love. Don't be afraid to stand up. Don't be afraid to come down here. To keep you long. It just takes that moment of faith for you to stand up and just say, God, I'm not going to trust in my fear anymore. I'm going to trust in you. I'm not going to trust in my anxiety. I'm going to trust in you because I need you today. If we could have some of our prayer team members come around, just lay hands on those who've come down. Let's just say this prayer. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray that you would just work in a mighty way today. Father, I come against a spirit of fear. I come against a spirit of anxiety. Lord, I come against these storms that keep coming over us, God. May we put our faith in you, Father. May we find your love to be real. May we find you to be enough, God. Just to know that you're in the boat with us, God. Just to know that you're walking with us, God. When we accept you into our hearts, when we ask you to become our Savior, God, you change our lives. Father God, in Jesus' name I pray that we would open our hearts to you, God. To put our trust in you, God. Father, Father Yahweh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to this storm. I speak to these storms. And I say, peace be still. You can calm the winds. You can calm the seas. Lord, you can create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. God, you can give us back the joy of our salvation that the enemy has tried to take away. God, I pray today that you will restore us. Lord, that as we look to you, Father, we find that love and that peace that we need. Oh, Jesus, we just praise you. Oh, we praise you. We thank you today. Praise you. blessings on these people today, God. Lord, that you'd walk with them throughout the day. You'd make them aware of your presence, Lord Jesus. You'd shine upon them with your face, your brilliant glory. Father, help us to spread that glory one to another. Help us to share in who you are with our friends, with our family. Let them know that you're alive and you're here. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Bless you all today. And uh, don't leave without shaking a hand or hugging a neck or putting a dollar in Cheyenne's bucket.